It's Larry Bobka here at Second Swing Master Club Fitter with another Master Club Fitter, Danny Farrell. And we're talking, we're going to talk about one of those kind of mythical things in golf. Adding lead tape to a golf club. Why well, would you do that? Well, because I want to make it feel right. Why did we add, why, where did lead tape come from? Okay. Since I'm old, Danny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give you a, a quick history of where lead tape came from. Back in the day, we all played woodwoods, you know, those little small things that looked like furniture. I, I think I saw one or two, yeah, yeah. maybe. Well, there was no adjustability other than maybe just bending it over your knee a little bit with the shaft. But if players want to alter ball flight, how are they going to alter ball flight? They would do it with the lead tape. They would put the lead tape in different places. You see, this is my personal five wood. Uh, it's a little beat up. I don't care because it works perfectly. You see the lead tape out here, out on the toe. Okay, why is it out on the toe? Well, the club was a little bit light swing weight wise. You know, the balance of the club felt a little light to me, but I like to fade the ball and since there was no adjustability and no way for me to bend this club, I put the lead tape out there to keep the face open. This makes it so much better. It's so much easier for me to put a little bit of lead tape out there so as it comes through impact, it stays open rather than closing. But modern golf clubs, especially, you know, Ping, Titleist, in their fairway woods and their drivers, we can all do that. So if you buy a driver off the rack, and you're like, wow, I'm struggling with it, it makes more sense to come in and get fit, even if it's a $200 driver. $39 fairway wood, folks, and absolutely love it. You come in, you get fit for it, we have adjustability, we're gonna help you play better rather than just, well, I'm only gonna spend $100, I'm only gonna spend $200. But let's make it let's make it work for you. Absolutely. Because you're wasting two hundred dollars if you don't. You know, people see lead tape. We get clubs in here all the time that have lead tape. You'll see players. You see players on tour. You'll see you know especially older golf clubs. Uh, you know, here's my personal sand wedge that is just plastered with lead tape on that. Okay. But back in the day when I worked for Titleist, I was grinding this to myself to get a to get the perfect shape. I got the perfect shape, but it was too light. So just loaded it up with lead tape to give it that feel, okay? We don't see that in a lot of modern golf clubs because of the adjustability and the movement right. of weight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this for a lot of guys out there. You know, you touched on what it can do for ball flight, but what exactly is swing weight? You talked about feel, right? I'm gonna borrow this. Yep. You're not going to charge me for it, are you? No, okay. no, no. Okay. But don't hit it because I don't like people hit my golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to give that back. <laughs> anyway, guys, swing weight's got to do with the balance of the golf club. Okay, think of it as a teeter totter. Yeah. It's the relationship between length, club head, I won't touch it, Larry. No. Nope. Shaft, and grip, too. Grip is a huge thing that can change the swing weight or the balance of that club. Yep. If you put more mass on that end, Larry, what's going to happen? It's gonna, it's, the, it's gonna move the balance or the feel of the golf club backwards or more up the shaft. So effectively, if I put a heavier grip on this side, remember the teeter totter, yep. totter will keep it simple, all of a sudden it goes this way and I lose the ability to feel that head weight, okay? So that's where lead tape would help rebalance that and change the performance of that golf club, okay? Um, another side of things we didn't touch on, length. Okay. Oh, absolutely. What if I cut an inch off of this, Larry? You lose six swing weights. Six swing six weights? Six swing weights. And a swing weight, if you, if you want to put it in terms that you can understand, a, sw a swing weight basically is the weight of a dime. So that would be like taking six dimes off the head. That's a significant amount of weight that when I'm waggling it, when I'm feeling it, it's going to do it. Hey, Danny, what does it do to shaft flex if oh. I cut an inch? Cut an edge, it's gonna play stout. Whew, I can't play that. Right, absolutely. So that's like a lot of times when we get juniors come in yeah. and dad's taking their set of golf clubs and chopped down a set of golf clubs. Now you've made it lighter, stiffer. 
you've actually made it harder for your kid to swing the golf club. Absolutely. Don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's why there's a lot of really good junior clubs. Or we can fit someone into something with a softer shaft, a better swing weight, better length for them to learn how to play. So I guess the bottom line, Danny, what we're, what we're telling people is come in, get your clubs evaluated, give us some understanding about what you're feeling, what's going on with your golf swing, and then we can help you. Because everybody looks and goes, well, it's about loft, it's about shaft, it's way more, folks. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I can spend three hours telling you about building golf clubs and how much the different components affect it and especially hey if i if i want to become a better player and i don't care if i'm starting at a five handicap wanting to be a zero or a 30 handicap wanting to be a 25 or a 20 handicapper your golf equipment matters a lot i mean that's like going that's like going to a nascar race with uh with a prius you know you're not going to win you're going to lose so you got to have the right you got to have the right equipment